it's very rare that I wake up and get into my first hour of the day as kind of enthusiastic as I am today. The hat's already backwards. We're going to talk about stability today. And of course, NADA. Mm. Here I go. Of course. The people really want to know who I is and who I'm surprised. Nine times out of ten, when I show up on a live stream with my hat backwards, Kyle also has his backwards and vice versa. I'm surprised your hat isn't backwards already. Usually, this is it's, an end of day. Like I'm, I'm, I'm like, trying to keep it right right on. now, right? But I know, yeah. like within the next hour, hour and a half, <laughs> there's only like so much that we can get done today before we get wheels up tomorrow, and like. I know there's going to be a mo I, I'm trying to keep it stable for a minute because I know once I go backwards, it's going to be all like, over. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so. well, if you didn't hear NADA is only two days away. Kyle and I are wheels up early, early tomorrow morning, uh, ready to rock. And uh, the Asoto team is going to be in full effect again. We'll say it again. We're bringing the show to you. We know that only yes. 30,000 out of 2 million people can make it, which means, according to my math, I didn't do well. Well, I did okay in math. But <laughs> there are more 1%. people <laughs> watching and listening than yes. there are attending. Therefore, we don't think it's cool that you miss out and just see all the selfie pics yeah. and think that NADA is just for other people. NADA is for you if you're in the auto I went industry. like this actually this morning. My kids were like, what are you going to be doing? And I pulled up my phone and I was like, here's our Schedule. NADA page, which you can find at a Soto NADA. And I was like, well, first we start with a live stream. And I just started scrolling and they were like, dad, that's a lot. And I was like, that's, that's only, only about a third of it. <laughs> only 11 a.m., right? Yeah, because yeah, if you think so about it, Kyle and I, especially on Thursday, we're splitting up with two separate production teams. So, I mean, if you're going to J.D. Power, Kyle's going to be right there out front. If you yeah. go to Automotive News, Kyle's going to be right there out front with a full that's production good. team. Make sure you talk to him. I'm going to be at the Auto Team America event, and people are going to think that a soda is everywhere. All that translated to say, go to a SOTU NADA.com. You can check our full schedule, live stream, yep. stream schedule, production schedule. And also you can link up to all of our social media accounts. Yeah. And that is how you'll get the real on the ground in the dirt mentality through social stories and content. Again, because we have two other social media content producers out. We have two writers. Um, our goal is that no one in this entire industry feels like they missed out on NADA. That's right. That's, That's right. it. So we're rolling in heavy. If you're an industry partner or sponsor, uh, demand is really high, but we'd love to stop by your booth. Send us a DM, send us a LinkedIn. We have some things available for you uh, again. So you can help get your message out to these beautiful people who will or won't be at NADA. Physically. There you go. <laughs> hey, look, we've got uh, a little content out for you today. Uh, at noon today, we'll have a auto collabs episode. We're rolling with Alan Crutch, good friend of the family here at Asodu. Uh, it's going to be on LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, all the whole nine yards. Uh, or you can catch the audio podcast uh, wherever you catch your audio podcast. That's right. Good morning so to our collabs. friends. Cars on the move. Good to see you this morning. We'll see you at NADA. Jason, good morning. Hope you're ready to crush it this morning. Thank you so much for the people who check in on the live stream. If you don't know and you just listen to the podcast, we actually live stream the video version so you can watch us be goofballs in person, like with our faces and everything. <laughs> and uh, we, we appreciate all of you. Uh, let's talk about a little news today. Today, we're doing something we've never done before. There is a theme. We're following a theme today. Usually, we pick a few stories in retail and automotive. Today, we're just going to follow a theme. And today's theme is stability. We're going to tell you, talk about stability in light of the news. So here's the first story. Steve Gates started selling Toyotas when he was in high school, and that was over 50 years ago. He's now the dealer principal of Gates Auto Family, uh, 11 store group in Kentucky, uh, Tennessee, and Indiana. And three of their stores are Toyota stores. And when the pandemic started, he said he didn't think there was any way they could survive with no ground stock. But then he, wow. he tells this great story. Yeah. In the 70s, back in the day, it was like before you and I were things. <laughs> we weren't things in the 70s. We were just yep. not there. Yeah. Um, 79. I came rocking in 79. So um, today, back then, you needed to put a $25 deposit down to reserve a Toyota because there was no ground stock. Right. How about that? Not yeah, much difference. It's wild. A little more than $25 it's today. It's a little bit more than $25. And the U.S. is still unique in the fact that we are we are not reserving vehicle culture. I mean, I was actually talking to Matt Jones of True Car earlier this week, and he was like, yo, I was in Europe. Everybody still oh, orders cars. It's four to six months before you get a car. That's just the way that they do it. So it is. It's, it's uh, yeah. So like, but you mean I love, in America, love, we want it now. I love the fact that there's like a cyclical nature thing to this, you know, and and, and so that's a big deal. 
So, um, so he is now actually, he's on the, the chairman of the board of the Toyota national dealer advisory council. And, uh, he had some great things to say about Toyota and about the next generations of dealers. He says this, I would love to get younger dealers involved in dealer council because it's vital. We don't need guys that are 70 years old on the dealer council shot fired. We oh. need 30 year old dealers. And so that's one of the things I hope to be able to do is convince men and women to get involved in dealer council. Yo, I love it. Meet Steve Gates. This is these. He's my people. <laughs> no, but I think I think we need both. I, the the beauty and and going to the theme of stability. The beauty of having people that have been in the industry for a long time that have seen it. Like I keep asking people that have been in the industry, tell me about the cyclical nature of the things that we are dealing with right now. The pandemic, the recession, all of these things. It gives you a groundedness, but also the energy of the younger generation gives you the ability to go. What's on the horizon? What are we looking out for? What's new? What's in, inventive? What's exciting? How are we perceiving customers? And the balance of those two scales, I think, is the best way for dealer councils, you said 20 it. groups, whatever. The balance of that keeps the stability in the industry. And that's why the stock price of the major publics and the profitability of the private uh, dealer groups is still steady. So, you know, a, a common theme of the last few years has been how can we incorporate more diversity into uh, leadership roles, into the dealer yep. world? That includes and has rarely talked about age diversity. Yep. Right. Is critical. I think just naturally speaking, like you said, we're going to have the 70 year olds and the 60 year olds and the, you know, the first gen. That's going to happen. Why? Because they have wisdom. But like, let's follow some precedent here. It's like you need the wisdom and you need the energy. You need them both, right? We all can't have both like Brian Benstock and wake up in the morning, run through a wall and uh, eat nuts and bolts for breakfast. We just can't do it. <laughs> so so um, there you go. So we're going to counterpoint a little bit. So that is kind of the essence of stability in automotive. And uh, speaking a little more of stability or the opposite thereof. Stop. Mm. Segway. Time. So big tech layoffs are continuing. We haven't talked about them yet on the show because we try to keep it positive, but we need a little contrast. Uh, big left, big tech layoffs continue as Google and Spotify now enter the mix. Google, who is known for its massive profitability, they're actually sitting on $100 billion in cash right now. They're also known for high pay. <laughs> that was a great list. They're, they're known for high pay, paying above average uh, for the roles that they hire for. They're known for that. And also for lavish perks. We've all seen the lavish Google perks. They announced... 12,000 person layoff via a sudden and unexpected email on Friday. This is the largest layoff in the company's history. They had um, an all hands meeting yesterday, which what does an all hands meeting look like for a company with 180,000 employees? I don't know, uh, but the servers were, were clocking in overtime. Um, basically executives and their CEO, uh, Sundar, how do you say his last name? No clue. Uh, I thought, I thought Shy. you were going to do that. Pashai. Pashai. I just call him Sundar every time. Sundar, every time. there you go. Responded. He responded very empathetically, but also offered, uh, he and the executive team offered counter arguments to some employee comments. So uh, two employees asked for some psychological safety to which the response was. And so like, yeah, that's one of those things where you're like, well, how are you going to handle this? Right? Because right. all different types of people, all different types of upbringings and feelings. He says, if you interpret psychological safety as removing all uncertainty, we can't do this. I was like, oh, that was the Philip I mean, Schindler. That's a very like Google's baseline. If, if you interpret it as like you can never deal with uncertainty in life, he's like, I just got nothing for you. Right. Um, so one Googler questioned the accountability of the leadership, right? Because they did say we expanded too quickly, we hired too aggressively, right. and um, you know, and the the comment was responsibility without consequence seems like an empty platitude. Is leadership foregoing bonuses or pay raises? Will anybody be stepping down? Um, so Sundar responded, um, all the executives are taking a very significant reduction in their pay as well. So uh, spreading the accountability out a little bit. Uh, also, Spotify announced a 6% reduction in its workforce. Um, 600 folks are going to be let go of the company's 9,000 employees. And you know, senior CEO Daniel Eck, very familiar statement, says over the last few months, We've made a considerable effort to rein in costs, right? Cost cutting is being talked about across the board, but it hasn't been enough. Um, their operating expenses were double their revenue in 2022. Wow. Just think that's about scary. that. Yeah. And that th that's a wild proposition. And I get it because like podcasts were springing up like wildfire in 19, 2021. Yep. Hey there. 
Um, <laughs> we did our part in 2022, though. We did our part in 2022. Okay, we were we were trying to help out the Spotify audience. Okay, but um, but they were springing up like crazy, and and even Spotify spent a ton of money on like specific podcasting and and the and like large shows, and to not see the revenue come to fruition from an ads perspective is that's a big ask. Now, I think that there, I, I don't know the Spotify cash position, but I I'm guessing it's not in the same cash position as Google. I don't know the types billion. of roles that they are getting rid of, but over 12,000 people, if I average that to $150,000 salary and benefits, um, which is maybe a little low for Google because I know that they, they pay higher and depending on the types of roles that they, that they're um, yep. getting rid of, but like that's $1.8 billion, which is a, Bloop. Let me, <laughs> bloop. That's, that's just like bucket sound. Bloop. That's two percent <laughs> of the total cash reserve of the company. So I, I mean, I don't know what lengths go through this, but I still think that there that this balance of stability we, that we're coming back to is if the stability is based in the cash position, then how do you leverage those twelve thousand people to become inventive? Or maybe they just aren't inventive, and and there's a mm. deeper reason than just the layoffs because. I would I would suspect that one point eight billion dollars in employee mm -hmm. revenue, if you encourage those employees to be more inventive, could put your good or employee expenses could produce more revenue in the end. Um, but hey, look, I'm not a CEO of a company with one hundred billion dollars in cash reserves, so I feel yet like that's a little bit like, yet, Kyle. Let's go yet. yet. <laughs> yet. I love but, it. The, but yet. another another part of the contrast is these are the conversations we're not having in amongst retail auto dealers. When when you talk about stability and and holding it down in the midst of upturn upswings and downturns and crises and all these things, guess what? Retail automotive is a really great place to build a career and a life. Yep. And we champion yeah, that all the time. This part, this point is just another point in history. And if you go back through all other cycles where there have been mass layoffs and retail automotive has never been in the middle of them. Retail auto dealers have never been in that. So if there was ever a time to lean into a career, if you're new to retail automotive, dig in, learn as much as you can, serve your people because you're not going to get that email. History shows us you're not going to get that surprise email. If anything, no. um, you're going to have opportunity to keep growing in times of downturn because this is a very uh, staple, it's a very staple of our economy. Uh, finally, one more uh it's it's not anecdotal. It's Speaking true, of staples of our podcast, <laughs> I guess we're all back. <laughs> you know, it's it's really tough to navigate the news, especially in automotive, and not talk about Elon Musk or Tesla. You know, several times a week. So you know, we yeah, try to keep it in uh, balance. But today, Kyle, what happened? What's happening with Tesla? Well, you what know, you doing over there. You heard a couple of weeks ago uh, that that Tesla was dropping their prices up to thirteen thousand dollars across their vehicles, specifically on its Model y, y, the long range, and uh, it dropped it dipped right below that tax incentive opportunity, uh, so that people could take advantage of the discount rebate, whatever you want to call it, as well as the tax incentive, the federal tax incentive. But right now, uh, they have bumped that price just five hundred dollars. Now it's not nothing to write home about, but I will say the interesting thing about this is that. The Model Y, because it's a delivery type vehicle and they, they are delivering these and not on ground stock, moving that price 13 grand, then the volatility of up 500. Very interesting. You can still qualify for the tax incentive at the low end. Uh, but if you drop that red paint color and the, the fancy 20 inch wheels, you're over the limit and you got to pay all the money and get no tax incentive. That's an so. expensive. Yeah. So like the tri coat red color, just right. if you, well, you expensive can pick decision. any color and <laughs> the 20 inch wheels and you can still be under it. But if right. you really need red, if you really need the red, it pushes you over. It or if you, you really need the, yeah. the most, the fanciest 20 inch wheels also pushes you over. So it's whatever they cost <laughs> plus $7,500. Right. Um, I think, I think people are going to be real satisfied with like black, gray, silver. Yeah. <laughs> you could see a lot of silver Tesla's like, rolling does around. Does Tesla make a blue? I don't think, I, didn't they no. have a blue? No, no blue, no, no. no green. No. Nope. No, no, no. Thank goodness. <laughs> no, no green. We don't need more green cars. I mean, there are very few greens that are right. the thing. I don't know. We won't get into that. It's a matter of taste. If you have like a really bright electric green car, God bless you. God bless you. Just do, do your thing. <laughs> do your thing. I mean, so that's really the time we have today because if we didn't mention it, NADA is coming up. Go to a so to NADA dot com see where we're going to be if you can't be there we still want you to be there we're going to work hard we'll see you tomorrow